So here's a new clip to walk you through the process of a duotone. Um, we'll just go through the basics of how to set up a duotone. Uh, really, if you were going to set up a duotone for offset printing, you would want to consult with your printer if possible to get the variable specs and the exact uh, um, specs of how they would want that saved. Um, the purpose of a duotone is to save money on printing. So oftentimes you'll see these in newsletters, you'll also see these on wedding announcements or formal announcements uh, to mix a two color print to make the print look a little bit richer or like that you've spent more money. So basically we're going to use a spot color and combine a spot color with this black and white photo you see here in Photoshop to make a duotone file which is a two color pixel based graphic. Uh, it's using a spot color and it's mixing a spot color. Typically we mix it with black. So most of the time you're going to see these and 90% of the time you're going to see them mixed with black. And it's also needs to be pointed out that duotones are a little bit harder to uh, print digitally and match that same color or that effect that you would get on an offset press. So basically we're mixing two continuous tone images to create a, a duotone meant for offset printing. Okay, so you see this photo here that I've got. Uh, it's set up to black and white. You want to make sure you get a good photo. Uh, we'll go in here and just make a quick adjustment. Bump up this uh, contrast a little bit. Okay, using the curves. So we'll just move the points, light and dark points in a little bit. You can see it's it gets it a little bit more pop. We don't want to overcorrect it just a little bit there. Okay, just a quick correction. Once you've got that, now it needs to be pointed out that you need to start uh, or make your image a grayscale image. If it's a full color image, you need to convert it to grayscale image mode and convert it to grayscale if it's not. Okay, this one we started with already was grayscale, so we should be set. 8-bit channels fine, just leave that on the default. So now that we've got that set up the way we want, we want to go to image mode and do a tone. Now initially when we pull this up, yours may come up as a black. Uh, just a black only and as a, a monotone. So we'll reset this to the way that you would see it. Something like this. Take these off and in fact get rid of these adjustments and we can set it up as a monotone. So the first time you come in it may be just set up as a monotone. Okay. We're going to go back to duotone and at this point we're going to pick a color. So typically it's very rare that you would want to mix two spot colors. Uh, in this case you almost always want to use black as one of your colors. Typically in a newsletter black is your text color so black's a color that you're going to use in there and then we pick a second spot color based on the company maybe uh, or whatever project you're working on. Uh, in this case we'll find a nice blue. Okay, So we're going to go to the color libraries and spec a Pantone color. Now you can do solid coated or we're going to try solid uncoated. Those are typically the two colors that you want to stick with in the Pantone series. Those are the ones that are used most. Occasionally you may use a metallic. You would want to consult with the printer because they're probably going to have a specific gold or a specific silver that you'll use. Okay, So we're going to pick a solid uncoated. And I would recommend that you pick one that is, doesn't have a name. Some of these that say Pantone Yellow, Rodin Red, Process Blue. We're going to avoid those. They have specific purposes. And we want one that's just Pantone, the number, and then in this case the letter U for uncoated. Now the ink's the same, but it will perform differently on an uncoated sheet of paper. So we're going to try and find a blue. We're going to see if the number 285 pulls up. And we're going to pick 285. It's not too dark. It's not too bright. Uh, it looks a little bit dark here, but we're going to come through and correct it. So we're going to pick 285. So when we come in, we're going to adjust the curve. Now typically in the curves, you're going to want to stick to the 100, which is uh, the 0, the 50, and the 100, which is the lights, the midtones, and the darks. 
Okay, so you're going to see as I adjust this, you can use the slider, or we can put in a whole number. If we want to put in 70, we're going to take out some of the darkness out of the that blue there. We could try a 60 and see how that lightens and takes out how much blue and black in the darks we're using. Okay, now we can go, which is the midtone right here, the 50%. And we want to try, let's see what 20 gives us. Kind of back off some of that. And if we wanted to, we can even add in a little bit of blue into the high, into the whites, the highlights. So we could add 10 or 15 just to add a little bit of blue in there. Okay. And we can uncheck the preview just to see how that's looking. Now it still may be a little bit dark, some of the dark points. So we're going to come in and adjust the black and maybe we want to try 90. Ooh, that might be too much. So just 95 maybe uh, or even a 98. Back off that black a little bit. Um, on the 50 we could try a 45 and see if that adjusts that. And once again we can uncheck it and see the difference there. Okay, And that's the basic setup of a duotone. Start with a black and white image. Make sure you've got some good contrast. Typically it's black in another color. Um, typically for a spot color you want to use a Pantone color. Uh, in this case we use the Pantone with the whole number and the letter U which I recommend. So either solid coated or solid uncoated. That's a good default palette to stick with. Those are the books that I would use for printing. Uh, and it's once again if you're going to do this for offset printing it's always wise to talk to your pre-press person or the printing specialist. Uh, ask them if they have a spe special set of instructions for how they want it set up. Okay. So when that file's done, we've got it here. We just need to save that file. So for me personally, I prefer the EPS, Photoshop EPS file. Um, and I would save that as a different name. Don't give it the same name. Uh, you don't want to save over your original because I have adjusted this image. If you want the original image, give it a, a new name. So we'll call this Duotone and we could even call it duotone test if we want okay now I like Photoshop EPS once again talk to your printer it's a little bit better it's a lot better than just the Photoshop file some printers will like a PDF um, everybody has their own little preference there so we'll save that file and I'm gonna go ahead and keep these specific but you see you get a lot of options uh, some of them may want a binary ASCII 85 or regular ASCII Okay. and we can go ahead and save that. So Now if you wanted this to print on a color printer or something else, uh, you just like the effect, you can make nice sepias this way with a brown spot tone, uh, spot color, Pantone spot color. You can go to image and mode and convert that right back to CMYK. Uh, you're going to get a warning here what profile to use. I just clicked OK and used the default one. But I could easily change that to a CMYK image or an RGB image if I needed to and wanted to use that just for the effect alone. But that's a duotone. That's how you would set it up.